This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Make 2020 the year of exploring new skills. Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. Today I am tackling your tatas, the questions that at this stage you are too afraid to ask. Rectification. This is a word you will likely have come across if you are interested in the technology of amplifiers. It's a vital process to get any amplifier to function and can be accomplished using either valve or solid state methods. But is the rectification method of your amplifier something you should be concerned about? Let's take a look at what rectification is, the technology behind it, and determine just what it means for your sound. A rectifier is a device that converts alternating current, or AC, into direct current, or DC. It's part of the power supply of the amplifier and isn't part of the audio signal chain. Rectifiers aren't exclusive to guitar amplifiers, not by a long way. Any device that requires conversion from AC to DC will have a rectifier in it somewhere to do that conversion. They are only one step in this conversion process. A rectified AC voltage doesn't give exactly the same result as a consistent DC voltage. So rectifiers are used in conjunction with smoothing capacitors, which even out the transitions, making the voltage more consistent. Even so, voltage ripple can still be an issue, where the rectified and smooth voltage doesn't match up to an unyielding DC performance. So a lot of care and consideration has to be based around the rectifiers and smoothing capacitors to eliminate this as much as possible in order to get our amplifiers to function correctly. AC mains voltage, which is around 110 volts AC in the US and 230 volts AC in Europe, enters the power transformer of the amplifier, which steps it up to around 350 volts AC. From there, the rectifier takes the AC, rectifies it, sends it through the smoothing capacitors and turns it into DC plate voltage, which allows the power valves in your amplifier to function. This rectified DC voltage can be higher than the transformer's AC depending on what type of rectifier is being used. Power valves require their plate or anode to be held at constant high voltage in order to attract the electrons bubbled off the cathode by thermionic emission. Without this high voltage DC, your power valve simply would not be able to amplify your guitar signal. This is why valve amplifiers are so lethal if you go prodding around inside them without the appropriate level of knowledge or care. DC is far more lethal than AC at the voltages found inside a valve amplifier. With AC, there are points periodically in the wave cycle where the voltage is zero, which might afford you enough relief to escape from an electric shock with minimal damage. However, DC is just constant, unrelenting 400 volts pushing electric current through your body. So don't fuck around with this shit if you don't know what you're doing. Rectification was originally performed by vacuum tubes, or thermionic valves. Diode valves, which only allow the flow of current in one direction, were perfect for rectifying alternating currents. Although with the advance in semiconductor technology and the electronics revolution in the 60s, solid state diodes largely took over from their valve rectifier counterparts, except in a very few niche cases like guitar amps, where we just refuse to move on. Large, expensive, glowing glass tubes gave way to smaller, cheaper semiconductor devices which do exactly the same job, converting AC into DC. In a purely technological and objective sense, solid-state rectifiers far outperform the valves they replaced. They are more efficient, can handle higher power, and have much faster response time compared to valves, meaning that they can adapt to sudden demands for more power almost instantaneously. They are also cheaper, smaller, easier to maintain, and have longer working lifetimes than their valve counterparts. However, statistics and numbers aren't everything. There's also a feel and tone difference between the two. With another revolution around our solar core complete, a fresh new decade of opportunities stretches out before us. Why not make 2020 the year of exploring new skills, deepening existing passions, and getting lost in your creativity? Skillshare is an online learning community which offers classes designed to be of practical use to your real life and fit around your busy schedule. 
As creatives, it's useful for us to continue expanding our skills, either for progression in our careers or for our own personal development. I've decided that 2020 should be the year that I finally make the push to learn a lot more about graphic design and animation in order for me to elevate my videos to new heights. Skillshare's classes on these subjects offer me everything I could possibly need and I'm starting 2020 with this class in 3D illustration. Clean, professional, isometric designs could really help me communicate topics to you in even greater detail. If exploring new opportunities is your New Year's resolution, then click on the link in the description to secure yourself two free months of premium membership. That should give you plenty of time to discover just how much you could learn on Skillshare and start your 2020 in the right creative direction. That's a damn good question. While the rectifier isn't part of the signal chain and has no direct influence over it, the rectifier does supply DC voltage to the plate of the power valves, and if anything were to disrupt this voltage supply, it would affect the amplification of the power valves and hence the signal would be influenced. Imagine you are playing along with your amp cranked up nice and loud and you decide to dig in really hard for a big chord. That causes an increased voltage in the audio signal leaving the pickups. This voltage spike travels to your amplifier and goes to the power valves for amplification. The power valves now having to do more work demand more of the rectifier to keep that plate voltage high. Unfortunately, the rectifier being outside of the audio signal chain has no way to anticipate this and the extra demand for more power causes the rectifier to slump momentarily in its voltage from which it then has to recover. It's sort of like if someone were passing you boxes down from a shelf. You hold out your hands, braced in anticipation for the weight of the box. All is going well for the first few boxes until your friend, unbeknownst to you, hands you a box which is much heavier than the last. As you catch it, the unexpected weight pulls your arms down. You can recover from this, of course, but it may take some time for you to realise what's happened and readjust your muscles to compensate. This is what we call SAG. It's a momentary voltage dip in electronic devices when they experience an unexpected heavy load. Valve rectifiers suffer far more from SAG than solid state rectification and they also take longer to recover. Meanwhile, in the power valves, the voltage sag of the rectifier means that until it recovers, the output tubes can't amplify to their full potential, meaning that the loud attack of aggressively picked notes sounds softer and spongier than the rest of the note. The recovery time of the rectifier also means that loud notes can sound looser and less focused. This can be a blessing or a curse depending on your desired sound. Obviously, if you are into extreme metal or modern rock and need tight, fast, consistent response from your amplifier, then sag from a valve rectifier is the last thing you'd want. For the most part, high gain amplifiers don't feature valve rectifiers, opting instead for solid state rectification which is far more consistent and responds faster. It's also a lot harder to make valve rectifiers work for 50 watt or 100 watt amplifiers, so pretty much all high power, high gain amplifiers will feature solid state rectification, with the glaring exception of the Mesa Boogie rectifier range which use multiple rectifier valves to get around these issues and lets you switch between valve valve and solid state rectification options. Classic amplifiers like the Marshall Plexi, the Soldano SLO and the Fender Twin Reverb all feature solid state rectification. True vintage or vintage inspired low wattage valve amplifiers are the ideal for valve rectification. The biggest reason for this being that back in the 50s, before the transistor revolution, valves were the only way to rectify. But more than that, the quirks and failures of the sound as these small amplifiers are pushed to their limits have become the most desirable effects of classic guitar tones. Sag and breakup from pushing an amplifier beyond where it can cope are the foundations upon which modern guitar music stands, so it's completely reasonable that players want to recapture that feel and response even now. Amplifiers such as the Vox AC30 and the Fender Tweed Deluxe are iconic examples of valve rectification. Advancements in technology and more robust systems might seem like the objective ideal for many, but it does little to satiate the subjective desires of players with a nostalgia for classic guitar tones. Better doesn't always sound better. Except when it does. It's kind of a stylistic preference. 
As with almost everything in this industry, there are far more complexities and player preferences than previously described. Even within the world of valve rectification, debate rages about which valve rectifiers are the best. There are many different shapes and sizes of glass bulbs that are designed with the purpose of rectification in mind, but which one is best really comes down to the design of your amplifier. Rectifier valves differ in their pin layout and physical size, but also in how much power they can handle, how fast they can respond, how much sag they exhibit, and what power valves they're going to be paired with. Most of these factors are locked in at the amplifier design stage, so it's not a good idea to mix and match rectifier valves that the amplifier wasn't designed to use. Remember, these rectifiers are responsible for supplying high voltage DC to your power valves. If you get that wrong, and the rectifier isn't performing as it should, it could have potentially dangerous and damaging consequences for both you and your amplifier. Always consult the manufacturer's official documentation before experimenting with valves and your amplifier, rectifiers or otherwise. Whether an amplifier will feature valve rectification or solid state rectification comes down to what role the designers wanted the amplifier to fulfill. The rectification method chosen will be the best for that amplifier to get the sound and response intended by the manufacturer. Solid state rectification will typically provide less sag, a faster response and allow the amplifier to amplify to higher powers. Valve rectification will typically be subject to more sag, become spongier the harder you play, but even the extent of that will be determined by which rectifier valves are being used. Ultimately though, how an amplifier does its rectification isn't that much of an important factor for the end user. What sort of sound you want and the application you desire from your amplifier will make that decision for you without you ever knowing it. While there is a lot of geek debate and very technical discussion to be had around the topic, that's something for the amp builders and the valve tinkerers and not for the rock stars at the other end of the guitar. Now that you know what rectifiers are and what they do, you should also know that they're not really something for the average guitarist to be worried about. And if you've liked this video and you want to see more content from me, then click that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can be notified of all new content as it comes out. My Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff. T-shirts are available and there's other videos you might not have seen. But that's all for now, guys. Keep it loud. And I'll see you later. <laughs>